Hey! Syncing multiple select boxes isn't always easy, especially when they are populated from HTTP requests. In this video, we'll first take a procedural approach to synchronizing select boxes with signals, then change to a reactive approach using a signal effect. Let's take a look. I'm in StackBlitz, looking at a sample application. This template has two select boxes. The first lists our team members. The second lists the tasks for the selected team member. The techniques we'll cover work for any dependent select boxes. Countries and cities, car makes and models, sports teams and players, and so on. The primary select box displays values from the member signal. Its change event is bound to the unselected member method of the component. And the dependent select box displays tasks from the to dos for member signal. Its change event is bound to the unselected task method. In the component, we inject the user service for the team members and the to do service for the tasks. I've hard coded empty values here for the signals displayed in the template and empty methods for the event binding, just so the template compiles. Let's populate the primary select box first. Our primary select box should display our team members, which are defined as our system users. Let's retrieve them in our user service. Here I'm using a public API to access user data and retrieve the team members. I'll create a variable members and call this.http.get to retrieve the user data from that endpoint. But we want a signal, not an observable. We use toSignal to create a signal from the emitted result. We now have a signal of user array or undefined. But we want our initial value to be an empty array, not undefined. So let's use the second argument to set an initial value to an empty array. Now we have a signal of user array. Using toSignal is great. It automatically subscribes to and unsubscribes from the observable returned by the HTTP GET. Nice! But it creates a read-only signal, which is fine for populating our primary select box. In the component, we set the member signal to the signal from the user service, this.userService.members. And in our template, since the select box is already bound to the member signal, it should just work. Drop down the first select box, and we see our team members. Yay! Looking at the HTML, we set the value of each select option to the member ID. And when the user selects a member, we pass that ID as the dollar event target. We'll then use that ID to retrieve the tasks for the selected member. Let's implement the secondary select box using a procedural approach first. The team member's tasks are defined as to-dos. In the to-do service, start by creating a signal for the member's tasks. It's a signal of to-do array, and it has an initial value of empty array. Just in case, let's define an error message signal with an initial value of empty string. If we have an error, we display a message to the user. Next, retrieve the tasks for the selected team member. I'll paste in a private method for that. This method calls HTTP GET to retrieve the tasks for the selected member using a parameterized query. We pass the member's ID to that query. You can basically ignore this bit. The public API has really long task titles, so I'm limiting the title to 20 characters. If there is an error, this code sets the error message signal. And since catch error requires rethrowing the error or returning a replacement observable, we return a new observable that emits an empty array. Now we'll create a public method that our component calls when the user selects a team member. I'll call it setMemberID and pass in the selected member ID. In this method, we call this dot get to dos and pass in the member ID. That method defines an HTTP request and returns an observable. We subscribe to that returned observable to issue the HTTP request. 
When the members' to-dos are returned, we set them into our to-dos signal. Looking at this code, there may be a delay between the time a team member is selected and the tasks for that member are returned. So before retrieving the to-dos, let's set our to-dos to an empty array to clear them. That way the task for the prior team member selection won't appear in the list while we're waiting for the HTTP request. Why define two methods when we could put this code in here? So we can more easily reuse this code when we change to a different approach later in this video. In the component, we set the signal variables to the signals from the to-do service. This dot to-do service dot to-dos and this dot to-do service dot error message. Next, we call our setMemberID method. Let's first declare a constant for the ID, then strongly type the element as HTML select element and access its value. And we want to ensure it's numeric, so we'll use the number constructor. Then we call this dot to do service dot set member ID and pass in that ID. Will that work? Let's give it a try. Select a team member, and we see their set of tasks. Select another team member, and we see their set of tasks. It works! Here in the component, when the user selects a team member, we call a method in our service passing in the user-selected member's ID. Looking at the service, here is that method. It clears our to-dos, then calls our private method to issue an HTTP request. That request uses a parameterized query and returns an observable. We then subscribe to that observable. And when the data is returned, we set it into our signal. Sweet! Let's see how this code changes using a signal effect. With a signal effect, we can react to changes in a signal. What signal do we want to react to? Well, every time a different team member is selected, we want to react and get their tasks. Let's start by defining a selected member ID signal, which will be a number or undefined if no member is selected. And let's set the initial value to undefined. Then in the setMemberID method, let's delete the call to get to do's and instead set that signal to the passed in ID this dot selected member ID dot set and pass in the member ID. Now we create the effect that reacts to changes in that signal. I'll declare a variable for the effect. We could instead define the effect within a constructor. We'll define a multi-line arrow function. We only want to get the tasks for the team member if a team member was selected. So if this dot selected member ID and open the box to read the ID from the signal. Then we call this dot get to do's and pass in this dot selected member ID and open the box again to read the ID from the signal. But we see an error. Our member ID could be undefined. What? We're checking for undefined here. Why are we getting this error? Every time we read a signal, it could have a different value so it could possibly be undefined here, even after checking it here. Let's instead create a constant called ID and read this signal one time, then use that ID in the if and pass it to the get to do's. That's better. Next, we subscribe to the observable returned from get to do's. And when the to do's are emitted from the observable, we set them into our to do's signal. That should be all we need to do. When the user selects a team member, the component calls this method, sets the ID of the selected team member into the signal, and our effect reacts getting the to-dos. Let's try it. Select a team member, and we see their set of tasks. Select another one, and we see their tasks. Select. So, we walk through a procedural technique for synchronizing two select boxes. Then we change to a more reactive approach using an effect. When should you use an effect? Well, here is the Angular documentation on effects. Scrolling down, 
This warns against using an effect for propagation of state changes. It recommends using a computed signal instead, which we can't do in this case because we're performing an async operation. So take care when using effects to update state. We used it here where we were confident that we weren't updating state that could cause a circular update. I've provided sample code for a third technique using a declarative approach with an RxJS subject. You can find the link to that and all of the code for this post in the video notes. Thanks for watching, and if this was useful, please like and subscribe.